Good morning, Chester Airpy Church Devotional Podcast. Thanks for being with us. We get started. All the way my Savior leads me, we're back. Genesis chapter 18, second part of the chapter. Here we go. Gives me grace for every trial. Feeds me with the living breath. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us as we get started this morning. We will read Genesis chapter 18, a familiar passage to us as this is the story of Abraham's interaction with Sodom and Gomorrah. Verse 16, the men, uh, is a reference to the visitors that Abraham entertained in the previous two stories, or in the previous section of Genesis chapter 18. Three men there. So the men got up and from there and looked over towards Sodom. And Abram was walking with them to see them off. And the Lord said to to, to Abram, should I hide what I know what I'm about to do from Abraham? And Abraham is to become great and powerful nation, and all the nations of the earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him so that he will command his children and his house after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. This is how the Lord will fulfill Abraham what he has promised to him. Then the Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is immense, and their sin is extremely serious. I will go down to see if what they have done justifies the cry that has come up to me. If not, I will find out. Then the men turned from there and went toward Sodom, while Abraham Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Abraham stepped forward and said, Will you really sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are fifty righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away instead of sparing the place for the sake of fifty righteous people who are in it? You could not possibly do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. You could not possibly do that. Won't the judge of the whole earth do what is just? The Lord says, well, if I find 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will, or I will spare the whole place for their sake. Then Abram answered, Since I have ventured to speak out to my Lord, even though I am but dust and ashes, suppose the 50 Righteous like five, will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? He replied, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. Then he spoke again to him, suppose 40 are found there. He answered, I will not destroy it on account of 40. Then he said, let my Lord be not angry and I will speak further. Suppose 30 are found there. And he answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. Then he said, since I have ventured to speak to my Lord, suppose 20 are found there. And he replied, I will not destroy it on account of twenty. Then he said, Lord, let not the Lord be angry. And will I, I will speak one more time. Suppose there are ten found, found there. And the Lord said, I will not destroy it on account of ten. When the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he departed and Abraham returned to his place. Here is a beautiful story of the power and the importance of intercessory prayer. Sodom and Gomorrah were exceedingly wicked places. And their, the outcry of their wickedness had come before the ears of the Lord. The Lord here visiting with Abraham is looking down over Sodom. He does not hide his plan from Abraham because Abraham is a part of his covenant people. That's a beauty of being a part of the covenant people of God. God makes his will known to us in his word. And we are so thankful for that. And so he says, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because of their unrighteousness, because of their wickedness, because of their sin. Abram is bold enough, Abraham is bold enough to ask, would you destroy the entire place if 50 righteous people are found there, the righteous and the wicked together? And God says, I will not do it. Abram says, what if they're 45? And God said, I will not. Abram says, he goes on down, works his way down. Finally, he gets to 10. If there are just 10 righteous people found in the city, will you destroy the city? For the sake of the righteous people, will you save it? And God says, I will save it for the sake of the righteous. I will save the city because that righteous people is there, or those righteous people are there. Now, let me pause and say two things about this as we wrap this up. Number one, the power of intercessory prayer. God says they have an incredibly wicked culture. They're incredibly wicked people, and I'm going to destroy them. But Abraham says, what what if there are some righteous people there? Abraham has the boldness to step in and intercede on behalf of the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, we live in a world where we tend to think about the growing wickedness around us and debauchery and 
and uh, all kinds of issues, and we lament that as Christians, and I'm responsible for lamenting as well. And sometimes we believe the world around us is beyond redemption. And we don't pray for God to save the land, God to save the institutions, for God to save the, the cities, the societies, on behalf of the righteous people. So that the testimony of righteousness could go out to the wicked, and maybe the wicked would see the glory and the majesty of God and the righteous people and return and follow Him and repent of their sins and follow the Lord. And so the challenge for us is, I think, one in this passage is to understand the importance of the intercessory prayer, in particular, praying for the wicked people to come to know the Lord, praying the Lord preserves the societies, the cultures, the institutions that we know and love, because there are righteous people. There are righteous people in our world. It also tells us the importance of righteous people. It takes a little bit of leaven to make the bread rise. Righteous people are the ones who keep the society moving forward, and they're righteous by the grace and mercy of God as they trust Christ. And so we want to make sure that we are standing firm in righteousness, but we also know that God is pleased to save the societies as long as the righteous people are there. We don't want to turn away. We want to press on. We want to give God glory. We want to press on in faith and walk in righteousness. So there's two beautiful points here. One, intercessory prayer works, and it's important too. Righteous people are the ones who, by as a result of God's goodness and grace, who are responsible for the preservation of society. Let's be righteous and trust that God will continue to preserve his people as he wishes. You guys take care. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Surely your goodness and mercy will find